this last hour is is really a couple of goals. One is to first of all thank many people who helped in planning and and preparing for the annual meeting, but also in sort of participating in NECAF's work over the course of the year. Another is to talk about the evaluation and, and provide that. I want to also give you um, a sense of where materials will be posted following the meeting so that you can reference them and get to slides or, or recordings or other pieces from the meeting that you might be looking for. And then um, Chris will kind of talk through next steps and what to the outcomes from this meeting and the work that we will aim to do over the next year as a result of the discussions and um, information gathered through the last two and three days of, of meeting. So with that, I will quickly just go through um, my thank yous and I will share my screen. Okay, so first I would like to thank the NECAS team and our PI team is Betsy Bin, Chris Callahan, myself, Amanda Kinchla, and Luke Laborde. Um, and I would like to thank that team who's been with NECAF since its inception in, in 2015. And, and without their vision and, and guidance and thoughtfulness, uh, much of the work we have accomplished would not have been possible. I would also like to thank Annie Fitzgerald and Sean Fogarty, who are part of the NECAF team and have really uh, elevated and accelerated the work that NECAFS does and have really put a lot of energy behind the work and is allowing much of the deliverables that we've talked about to, to come out. And so just want to just take a moment and, and recognize this group of people and uh, say thank you and I appreciate all, all that you do. Next, the, we had a regulator one day meeting and I, I do just want to pull this up to, to show those who participated in the planning committee ahead of that meeting. Um, I appreciate that. That was not an easy task. We, I think, had six planning meetings to, to get ourselves ready for that one day meeting. And I appreciate that. Uh, Resha, Chris, Chris, Liz, Jeremy, Ananda, Abby, Vicki, Anna, Molly, Alec, Aaron, Michael, Lindsay, Christina, and Kim. Uh, that first day had breakout group meet uh, a few breakout groups, and I'd like to thank those facilitators, Abby, Steve, Eric, Amanda, Anna, Aaron, Gina, Michael, and Chris. Uh, I would like to thank the preventive control work group lead. So there is a group, this group of folks um, meets on a monthly basis throughout the year to move the preventive control work group activities forward. And I would just like to Say thank you to Beth Demings, Amanda Kinchla, Luke Laborde, Nicole Richard, Andrea Gilbert, and Dave Seddon. And again, thank you without that guidance and continued energy um, that that group is, has accomplished quite a bit because of the vision of, of these members. So thank you to all of you. We had uh, many breakout group facilitators across the produce safety meetings, um, 13 in all, uh, Antonio, Ali, Gina, Kathy, Hans, Angela, Sean, Wes, Kristen, Michael, Brenda, Juan, Seth, Wendy, and Claire. Thank you very much uh, for leading the groups through those important discussions. That was very much um, appreciated and, and your, your guidance has been helpful. So thank you for that. Okay, so, um, those were, there are a lot of other people behind the scenes that help with planning in individual sessions. Um, and I apologize in advance for missing some of you, but I very much appreciate all the guidance. Whenever Chris and I ask for support, the answer is always yes, and how can I help? And that is very much greatly appreciated. Um, we are a regional network and without all of you, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you for that. Um, we always love your feedback in the evaluation. So this is something that we gather every year and the evaluation stays exactly the same. And that allows us to evaluate the work over time. Um, and so I've, I've put a, a link into the chat box. I hope that everybody will take the opportunity to go to that. It's a Google form. 
and just provide some evaluation feedback. We do take it seriously and we are going to um, look at that information and, and collect it. Okay, and then the last thing that I wanna do is I want to share with you the uh, NECAPS website. So if you're not familiar with the NECAPS website, this is where we host all of the outcomes from our annual meetings. So if you're, if you're back on the main NECAPS page, there's a, a button at the bottom that says annual meeting and it will bring you to this annual meeting page. And here we have the summary of all of our past annual meetings. And this is where all of the presentations, all of the slides, all of the notes and summary outputs will be posted after the meeting. So for example, if you were to come here, you could see from last year, here's all the combined meeting minutes. You'll also see the agenda from the, from the meeting and associated slides are linked there to each of those presentations within the agenda. So we will collect all of the slides and we will post everything to the NECAPS annual meeting website so that you can retrieve all of this information following the meeting. Okay, and with that, I'll turn it over to Chris to talk about the next steps and what we'll do with the discussion from the last two days. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Elizabeth. And uh, uh, again, big thank you to everybody who has had a, had a role in uh, organizing the annual meeting and also to everybody who showed up and stayed engaged. This is, this is a, um, I know uh, everybody is plenty busy um, and there, there are other things to do. So thank you for being with us and thanks for being part of, part of the conversations. Uh, another real, real quick, but really important. Thank you to Elizabeth again. Um, she really does pull all this together, um, keeps us focused and organized and, um, and makes, makes this enjoyable. So thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, the rest of the, the day, we're gonna spend uh, uh, just talking a little bit about what happened in the various um, sessions. And so remember, we have two parallel sessions that happen with the NECAPS annual meeting. We have preventive controls for human foods session and then the produce safety set session. Um, so to do that, I wanted to start by asking Annie Fitzgerald to uh, give us a quick overview. We're really looking for about five minutes from each session in terms of this overview, and then we'll have a, a little bit more in-depth um, uh, discussion among the whole group. So about five minutes. What happened in the PCHF work group, Annie? I've got all the dirt, Chris. Um, <laughs> but thank you. Um, yeah, uh, we were the smaller session, but I like to think we had a, a very strong uh, discussion throughout. And I really appreciate everyone who came to the PCHF uh, breakout group. I really enjoyed everyone's thoughts and insight. Um, so we opened with a panel discussion from state regulators, um, which included the logistics of boots on the ground inspections. Um, and it particularly focused on the challenges seen in record keeping and in effective training. Um, next was a data snapshot presentation, which is a proposed project to collect, organize, and disseminate information and statistics about Northeast food processing. Um, this is something that's very early in its infancy, and it's a great chance to sort of collaborate and build a project that's going to be helpful for everyone who wants to partake in it. Um, Yesterday afternoon after that, uh, Donna Schaffner discussed both the challenges and the solutions she's encountered in delivering uh, remote PCHF uh, trainings, as well as an update from the FSPCA leadership. Uh, Martin Bucknavage reviewed curriculum changes to the FSPCA course, um, as well as anticipated implementation, uh, how it's going to impact trainers, and ideally um, how it will be recognized as part of a HACCP certification. Uh, next from the working group, we got updates. So there's uh, the three sort of subgroups of the preventive controls working group. Um, from, res from resources, we have a new PCHF site um, that's been developed and now it's under review 
from both processors and from food safety educators to make improvements before we do that final push. Um, from resources, the website gets handed off to the awareness subgroup, um, and they're going to actually take charge for launching the site, promoting it, and getting the word out to processors, regulators, educators, anyone who needs a preventive controls for human food resource uh, website in their lives. They'll have the word from awareness. Um, the third subgroup is evaluation. And evaluation has developed their post-training survey tool, which will be used to evaluate trainings and develop a standard of training evaluations in the Northeast that it can be compared against. This project is intended to improve both uh, our work in delivering information and trainings, as well as to improve regional knowledge and understanding of preventive controls training and how uh, it's implemented. Uh, the Today, I guess the next presentation we got was from Andrea Gilbert Ekman, who updated us on a needs assessment related to small processors from the perspective of food safety communicators. Uh, this led way to a discussion about effective strategies for education for processors, about preventive controls, what are some of the pitfalls, what are some of the ways we can approach these challenges? Uh, after Andrea's discussion, uh, Jill Fitzsimmons directed us through uh, another discussion um, specifically about the working group. So we talked about the challenges and opportunities present within the working group. Um, this led way to a very, I think, robust discussion of the needs and goals based on how the working group operates currently. Um, what are sort of the most uh, important things that our work can do. Uh, how can we do this within the way that we're organized right now? Um, okay, this, this has led to uh, our top three identified priorities, and they were building relationships with intermediary organizations such as local and state departments of health, um, different interest groups, anyone who sort of can act as the conduit between educators and processors. The next priority identified was maximizing the group's awareness campaign to reach processors and promote that forthcoming PCHF site to really get that word and that tool out there to help uh, processors. And then the third identified uh, point was increasing project communication and outreach to food safety communicators to imp improve uh, the flow of communication and uh, collaboration between these groups. If folks don't know what we're doing, we can only help so far. Uh, so again, I'd really like to thank everyone who came to the working group session. Uh, we had some really great conversations and I think we all really benefited from learning each other's perspectives and what projects are going on. Thanks, Annie. And the, the folks from the PCHF uh, work group, we will have a, an opportunity for if there are any reflections that you all have uh, we'll, we'll do that in just, just a moment. Uh, I'm going to provide a quick summary of the produce safety work group uh, sessions. It started actually uh, day one, which was a day before yesterday, um, it, with the uh, the one day regula regulatory uh, work group uh, discussion. And uh, a sort of a key a key takeaway there was the. Um, an interest in some continuing some interim activities between the annual uh, interim conversations between the uh, annual meeting. And so I think there will be some effort uh, among that group to, to do that um, on a, a little bit more frequent basis. And one of the um, the other key takeaways from that uh, that I that I understood was um, the value and importance of continuing this this summarize, summarization of observations from uh, the inspectional observations and experiences. Um, it really has helped form uh, how NECAFS operates and how our annual meeting is, is um, organized. And, and it has already started to inform uh, research education and extension work as well. So um, that's a, a really critical piece of this. In day two, so yesterday, the produce safety group um, really took a deep dive on the topic of worker training. and. Um, one of the key, what well, we've reviewed current work, uh, current projects that are focused on worker training. We discussed quite a bit about how issues around worker training show up in in OFRRs and in inspections and, and run of the mill farm visits. Um, and one of the key uh, key um, clarifications was this: it's not necessarily just where the term worker training shows up in section uh, sub subpart C and D. It's also the way the places it shows up indirectly. So in, in 
in the ways that either um, risk risk management or risk reduction act, uh, practices are done or aren't done as a result of worker training or uh, or poor worker training. So it does sort of point to really a, a, an opportunity to rethink how we approach education, training, and even orientation on farm around the topic of worker training uh, and um, not moving away from the fundamentals, proto-safety fundamentals covered, say, in, in uh, some uh, video video trainings, but also going a little bit deeper and supplementing with some really um, specific technical assistance. Uh, we had a brainstorm breakout session specifically uh, on day two around the, the worker training needs and some possible solutions uh, or approaches. Um, each of the breakout groups, I think there were 13, if I'm remembering correctly, um, developed a, a Google Doc uh, jointly uh, to capture the, the activity of their breakout group and the brainstorming. Uh, NECAFs, our job is gonna to be to consolidate that down into something that we can share with what is a nascent uh, worker training work group within NECAFs and, and start to frame, start to develop a framework for, for action on that as a, as a group. And, and we will report back out to the NECAFs network um, after an initial review of that and invite people into that process uh, wherever wherever it makes sense. So um, you can expect to hear from us on that. And as Elizabeth said, that'll live uh, also on the, the NECAFs annual meeting website. Um, timeframe for that is is probably then that, you know, an initial review within the next three, three months and start to really sort of develop a work group around worker training uh, within the next six months, aiming to have something, some, some sort of um, productive output within the next 12. Today, uh, the focus was really circling back on this idea of how do we go from uh, proto safety research and how do we bridge the gap between proto safety research and practice? Um, if we think back to this, the, the NECAS continuous improvement model of, you know, field observations, uh, identifying research questions that can then be translated into practice, which hopefully address the field observations. That's really what we're trying to get at here. Um, and uh, so a summary was presented of the, the current project that is focused on understanding what, what um, literature exists that can help inform education and practice. Um, and we went into a, a really uh, engaging uh, and entertaining um, risk-based thinking and um, risk-based thinking session uh, led by Don Schaffner and Ben Chapman. Um, and it involved a, a, a series of scenarios um, where particular practices uh, and specific crops uh, were were laid out, and then the, the groups were asked to say risky or not. Um, and so, it, and the, the long and short of it is, as many probably have already concluded, it depends, right? So, uh, really meant to be a, a way, not necessarily of landing on an answer, but really going through the process of landing on an answer. Um, so what to do with that? I think, you know, the, that the, the research, the lit review, uh, activity will continue, um, and, and develop similar type, um, summaries that can be used for for uh, other kinds of scenarios other themes the the other thing that stood out for me and i would love to get feedback on this either through the evaluation or in the next uh portion of time is you know how, how did that exercise feel to you all is that something you'd like to have an opportunity to do more more frequently um you know is it something we ought to kneecaps ought to plan to do quarterly for example, as a as a webinar, not to take away from the listenership of Ben and uh, and uh, Don's podcast, but um, I wonder if there's there's interest in that among this group. It's sort of a live a live session. Okay. With that, I'd like to move into uh, really sort of the the kind of an open mic uh, session here, where I would like to hear a little bit from. No, I'd, I'd like to hear a lot from all of you about uh, reflections from the past two days or three days, if you were here for, for the uh, uh, regulator group uh, meeting. Reflections. Did, have you learned something new? Um, how, did you learn about a new project or initiative? Uh, did you develop some, some new knowledge that, that you, um, uh, as a result of the annual meeting? And have you made a new connection? And I'm going to do this by calling on states, and I'm going to call 
on the states by their nickname. Anybody from the pine tree state want to unmute and speak up? Sure, this is Lindsay. Can you hear me? We can. Thanks, Lindsay. So, yeah, I picked up lots of great information. I enjoyed the exercise from the last breakout session and I made some good connections. So time well spent for me, for sure. Thanks so much. It's great to have you with us. Other quick reflections from the Pine Tree State? Okay, I'll come back to the others in the next question. How about the Granite State? Reflections, have you learned something new? Learn about a new project? Connect with anybody new? Uh, this is Deb, and I really enjoyed interacting with folks and getting to know who is up here in this neck of the woods. Um, the uh, breakout sessions were very personal in the sense that you participate more than you would in a group setting. So I like that part. Um, on the, um, I, I did get an email through someone who was responding to uh, a comment I made for the poster session on text, use of text uh, with mm. the farm members and uh, that was a, a, a really interesting uh, link to, it's called Loom, L-O-O-M dot com, which um, uh, hosts in the cloud uh, a video that then can interact with the smartphone that your employee would have out in the field if you wanted to demonstrate the tasks that you want them to complete there, which then could be have a shareable link to the other employees in case it's something that you need to simultaneously update the rest of the crew so that they're ready for the next shift. Very, very techy and that's cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Deborah. Thanks. How about the Green Mountain State? I think I actually oh. shared that um, link about loom.com I, I milk goats twice a week and that is a tool that the farmer has used to update the crew on not food safety specific related tasks but i really saw a parallel there um great That's i great. i really appreciated the podcast demo live demo that was really engaging thanks uh, i'll add from the green mountain state this is Hans, and uh, thank you both, all of all the organizing team. Um, my first reflection quickly is that uh, I thought it, the agenda was brilliant from my perspective, um, and it, it just shows me again and again that, that less is more, um, and specifically just that it was, the tasks were pretty simple, and we had enough time in the breakout groups and the discussion questions and what that does is takes the stress off and opens space for just creative sharing. And um, you know, just, I really saw that uh, this time. So thank you guys for that. Um, and, I, and I do also wanna add one other thing, sorry to be long-winded, uh, but I do think that the two topics, the breakout topics, worker training in, this, in the PSR and risk assessment are really like the most important topics for us to help build long-term integrity of the produce safety rule. And I say that just because, you know, I think that the integrity of the PSR hinges on buy-in of those who truly implement that rule day to day, day in, day out in the trenches, and that's the farmers. And so that buy-in of those farmers really hinges, I think, on their success, not only their successful integration of the rule, but, but also the, just this honest case-by-case um, risk assessment by inspectors that come on their farms and the use of that risk assessment to help interpret the rule. So that over year, year after year is going to build buy-in and, uh, and, in, and successful integration. And I think 10 years down the line, if we do this right, we, we've got a really good working, uh, well-working rule. So I'll, I'll stop there. Thanks. Thanks. That's great. 
I'm going to keep going through my roster here. How about somebody from the Bay State and or the old colony state? Is that Maryland? No. Actually, a true square. It's it's uh, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll get I, you. Uh, I, um, yeah. So uh, I guess for me, there was some validity in the conversation we had today, talking about um, the concerns and challenges trying to reach our target audience of small processors and. I always sometimes think that NECAS meetings are a little bit of a therapy session because <laughs> confirming the problems that we're seeing in our own region and trying to find new strategies to address that was very rewarding. Um, and I felt like today's discussion was really helpful in guiding the direction that we want to go in. And I appreciate all of the people's willingness to provide that feedback today. Any other Bay Staters in the house? If anybody's waiting for Michael to speak up, he, I don't think he's here. So. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point, Chris. If anyone wants to act like Michael and then say something that he probably would have said and use the thick Boston accent, that too would be appreciated. No, 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 no. We're going to move on. Um, uh, Ocean State. All right, I'll I'll jump in. Thanks, Abby. Way to go. Um, yeah, it's been a really great experience, I think, as always. Um, and I think, you know, doing a virtual conference is never easy, but I do think the smaller breakout rooms has really helped facilitate conversation. And um, I think we had, I had a lot of great lively conversations um, and it's always nice to sort of just express your train of thought and see if anybody else is on the same page. Um, so I think if anything, I always feel um, more confident after these conferences that I'm, you know, we're all moving in the right direction. And I, I just, the biggest takeaway for me is the, the idea of visual SOPs. <laughs> I can't let it go. <laughs> yeah. You're a good company. Thanks, Abby. That's great. <laughs> Thanks. Nutmeg State. Got any nutmeggers? <laughs> is that Connecticut? I'm not sure. I need to uh, yeah, otherwise, other, otherwise known as Husky Nation, I think. Mark. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, well, thank you all for putting this on. First of all, it's something that I know we all always look forward to participating in and traveling too, preferably. But you know, we do the best we can with what we have. Um, you know, as always, I enjoy seeing everybody. We enjoy the, the exercises. We always get something out of it. I do have to say that I don't know if I've ever actually seen uh, a hun an onion harvester. So that was something new for me. Um, there might be one in Connecticut, but um, generally that's not how it's done. But it was it was interesting to see that. And uh, you know, really the big takeaway for me anyway was all, all the risk-based talk. I mean, it's stuff that we deal with as inspectors, um, but primarily what we're, what we're, what's going through our mind is what does the law say? And I think as we kind of like think about that concept and how it's going to affect how the inspections we do goes, because we could acknowledge that it's not necessarily a huge risk, but what does the law say as far as what we're viewing? And um, I think that's something that we're going to have to deal with moving forward. I think it's something we always knew we were going to have issues with, and I think we need more dialogue just as far as kind of where we go from here as far as addressing what the law requires and what the true risk really is. Um, I don't know if Risha, Mackenzie, or Ron have any additional thoughts, but that was my perspective. But thank you again. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Empire State. Well, I'll jump on if nobody's going to jump on. I was holding that, Chris, but. Um, Thanks, Betsy. I, I think uh, a couple of things. I was mostly in the produce section, so it's going to be biased towards the produce section. Um, one, for me, kneecaps remains networking. It's great to see people, and I think um, that's always a good part of this. 
Um, I think the other uh, thing is moving, picking a topic and moving it forward. Right. So that's one of the other things that I, I like to see that that usually they build on each other. Now, perhaps it's hard for people that jump in midstream. But for those of us that are coming year to year, it's nice to see that movement on certain topics. Um, and then I, I really enjoyed the I, I enjoyed the. I'm going to say Ben and Don, but not just because of Ben and Don. I enjoy the idea of bringing something that makes us think differently about things and tasking us with with perhaps looking at life a little differently than we normally do. So that's what I value about showing up. Thanks, Betsy. About somebody from the Garden State, any reflections? Learn something new, learn about a new project, make a new connection? The Garden State. I will say, Chris, I'm at a deficit when people speak that I don't actually know the state they're from because I don't know all these state names. I'll, I'll post them in a minute. <laughs> Well, look, fortunately, I know what the Garden State is. Is Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from down south, the Garden State. We call it Down Jersey. Um, I think for me, it was the first time I went over into the produce side where I'd been in the preventive control. So it was interesting. And I'd say even though um, Betsy, it was possibly new, I didn't feel like I was left out or left behind. So um, I found that really helpful. Um, and I've obviously made lots of connections as I always do at NECAFs and I would agree with Amanda. It's helped me realize I'm not alone, even though I'm out in the field on my own or I'm out with my clients on my own. There's lots of people facing the same issues. So. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, uh, just West. I, I mean, I'll re reiterate what, what Betsy said, but I think the big thing is the scenarios to give, a, give real concrete scenarios where we have to react to. And that's probably the, the biggest thing that really makes, I think, makes this work. And I think we need to do more of those. Thanks, Wes. <clears throat> Keystone State? Am I the only one from Pennsylvania? And I do know that it's Pennsylvania, thank God. Um, <laughs> Take them off. Let's go. Kathy and I are a little at a disadvantage here. So um, always, as always, really enjoy it. Really enjoy the simplicity of it and being able to dig in and focus on certain things. Always really enjoy being able to, as an educator, talk with, you know, think, brainstorm and think through things and do risk assessments with our regulators. Very, very important for me. And um, I enjoyed meeting Hans in one of the sessions and hoping that we can do some collaboration on the scrub project. Great. Thanks, Lindsay. Anybody else from Keystone State? All right. Gonna, this, is, this is coming back to you, Shauna, the free state or the old line state. That was new to me. The line makes sense for the uh, Mason-Dixon line, but I think at least coming from the FSOP grant perspective, uh, it definitely built more confidence for Angela and I to know we're on target for what we are kind of envisioning for in terms of outputs um, and also getting some more names. I think it might be fair if we work with you all to maybe get some feedback from others working in this area as we develop some of these materials in addition to some of the farmers and other folks within our state. That's great, thanks. <clears throat> uh, how about anybody from the first state or the diamond state? We're, we're here, Delaware. Um, yeah, I just wanna say thank you again for all the hard work you put into this conference. It's, it was great as always. Um, what I enjoyed was that the agenda was designed really in a way that broke it down for communication at all levels of industry. So it allowed us all to think about situations and scenarios and see how each other are thinking from a regulator to an um, educator perspective, vice versa, and everywhere in between. Um, and then I think the key takeaways would be like, as Abby said, we are all moving in the right direction and coming out of these these conferences that does really help to 
understand that we are kind of all on the same page, even though we may be in different levels of implementation. Um, and then also I made some good connections and learned some new resources that might be beneficial to some places where I see additional educational needs. So that was a good thing. Thank you all again. Thanks, Anna. That's uh, one of the uh, things, uh, the first day where we looked at ways to improve uh, growers' uh, worker training and working with them to be more effective at it. Thanks, Gordon. Callie? Thanks. It's so nice to see both Anna and Gordon here. One of the nice things about these conferences is just getting <laughs> together. Um, I, I really enjoyed the breakout sessions. I think Deborah and I were actually in the same group twice, and I totally agree with what she said. It was personal and really just nice way to break out important topics and hear such a variety of opinions. I also appreciate how the questions this year particularly helped to contextualize training and really provided a variety of different aspects that way. So thank you all for putting together an outstanding conference. Thanks, Callie. Do we have anybody from the Mountain State? Hey, Chris, this is Jeremy Grant, I'm here. Uh, yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you all for all your hard work that you put into this uh, this year. The breakouts were great. Uh, it kind of gave a nice dynamic of, um, you know, regulators and educators put in the same room, but they were a small group, so everybody got plenty of time um, to kind of voice their opinion, and we had some really good discussions and, and debates, but I think the, the takeaway from that at the end of the day, we all kind of came up with the same answer and it could same conclusions on, on many of the issues. So I know that we're all headed in the in the right direction and, and that's always refreshing. So again, thank you all. Great to have you with us, Jeremy. Thank you. So I, I did not find a nickname for the District of Columbia. I'm sure there may be some. Um, I do love the um, the phrase on their, the license plates, which is taxation without representation. So anybody from DC want to speak up? or the DC area. Hey, Chris, Trisha here. Hey, Trisha. Yeah, hey. Um, so I sat in on the preventative controls group, which is a, definitely out of my wheelhouse. So unlike most of the people on this call, I am not an educator. I'm kind of in this in-between nebulous space where we work with lots of different project partners delivering this type of content. but. It was really good to hear kind of stuff from the PCR end of things. Um, I really appreciated uh, hearing how the working groups were formed, actually. That was one of kind of my favorite parts um, and kind of the strategic planning towards that. And yeah, just really good to meet some new people and get to be in on the conversations. Glad you're able to join us, Trisha. For, for those who haven't met Trisha yet, she's a critical part of the Scrub FSOP project. and. Uh, keeps us keeps us focused in, in creating good stuff out of that project. Thanks, Tricia. All right, we also have folks joining from other states outside the region, and I'd like to just invite any anybody uh, who, who, uh, who I, whose state nickname I haven't said yet to unmute and share any reflections you've had. Learn something new, learn about a new project, meet somebody new. What's the, what's the California nickname? The Golden State. Hmm. California nickname? I'm not sure. Golden State, yeah. Gold, sure. Golden State. Yep. Great. Well, it, um, thank you for inviting me, Elizabeth. Um, it was really great. Um, learned a lot, especially in the groups, group sessions. Um, it's really interesting to see that we all have the same goal and to preventing any outbreaks and how to come up with new solutions. That definitely got me thinking about our trainings and strategies, especially with the risks associated. Um, great topics regarding the uh, tomato um, onions because um, that's a topic that I wasn't really able to answer the farmers here at Alba um, about tomato touching the ground or, or how to, um, regarding the cabbage, you know, removing the leaf, if it's okay or not. So definitely, um, I'll be able to provide great feedback to um, the farmers here in Alba. And also it was nice to meet everybody else. 
Um, uh, for previous workshops, I noticed that I recognize three or four people here in this meeting. So it's great. I think in the future, in time, I'll continue to get invited. I'll get to uh, know the rest of you guys as well. But um, definitely, it's great. Um, it's great to also uh, be able to network because uh, I don't have all the answers, but it's always good to reach out to somebody for a question or concern I might have. So thank you. Great to have you with us, Antonio. Thanks. Thank you. So this is Patrick from the Show Me State. And uh, it, it's always good to uh, to uh, hear from colleagues in the other regions. Um, thank you for letting me join the meeting. If I were to single out uh, some things that were particularly valuable to me, I really enjoyed the uh, exercise with the podcast guys. That was great. And I'll definitely be checking out that podcast. And then the uh, emphasis on worker training on day one, oh, just uh, so applicable to what we're seeing in, in our part of the world as well. So. Uh, again, I want to thank the organizers, first of all, for organizing the meeting, but also for inviting those of us from outside the Northeast to, to join with you. Great to have you with us, Patrick. Thanks. I'll jump in here. This is Kirby uh, from down in Florida in the Sunshine State, living up to its name today, almost 80 degrees where I am. Um, but I just really, I'll echo what's already been said. I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here and hear from everybody, lots of great information over the last couple of days and great discussions. Um, and, and also really appreciated that last exercise in the, in the produce safety uh, group. So um, anyway, got a lot out of this meeting and, and um, enjoyed meeting everybody and uh, yeah, had a great time. Thank you. Thanks Kirby, nice to have you. Um, I'll pipe in from the Badger State or the Dairy State, also known as the Middle Coast. That was a new one. Uh, I can't say that uh, it's 80 degrees. In fact, I can say it's 78 degrees colder than that uh, where I'm at. <laughs> so my jealousy is, uh, is, is, is a little apparent. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it's great to talk to uh, people outside of the NCR FISMA, especially other regulators um, and educators. It was good to hear that... Uh, uh, we all have the same issues uh, on, on topics, uh, hearing the discussions about the, the various scenarios. Um, you know, it didn't matter for what region we're from, we all kind of saw the same things and said the same things. So that was kind of heartening. Um, you know, at least we're there. Each, each section seems, uh, each uh, 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 area seems to have its own concerns, but uh, in all farming practices, but we're still all looking at the same thing. Um, I did get a few takeaways as far as uh, uh, educational ideas. Um, the first day um, really made, had uh, got me thinking again about uh, uh, posters and providing posters uh, as a means to assist uh, farmers with their continuing training problems. Um, so yeah, I mean, looking forward to uh, next year, hopefully in person. Thanks, Mike, great to have you. What, what about, um, so that, that was, it's great and super helpful to hear what, the, what, what we took away uh, from the meeting uh, collectively and individually and also uh, what, what was new. I'm, I'm also curious if anybody has anything, um, you know, Mike, Mike just gave a good example about exploring posters, um, visual SOPs were raised. Who has something specific that they've actually, you know, they've written down and put a star next to or have a have added to their to do list? What what are some intentions coming out of the meeting? What what do you plan to do with what you've gained from the conversation over the past couple or few days? And we're just going to open this up. People jump in. So this is Dan Bernsteel from the Granite State. I uh, missed my call in when when our name came up. Um, first time at the conference, I thought it was great. And the thing that really stuck out to me was that Cornell study that came up yesterday um, about training materials. We just finished a needs assessment in our state. We're getting ready to put out some educational materials and see that like 66% of materials going out were not rated high quality. To me, is such a, a gigantic thing. Like if we're going to be putting all this time and effort into creating education, creating programs, obviously, I think all of us want to do the best job possible. So I put a big star next to that. As soon as more information about that comes out, I'd love to really dig into that. Great. And a reminder, the NECAFS, uh, sorry, the Food Safety Resource Clearinghouse 
um, is an online uh, curated one-stop shop for food safety resources and also has an integrated uh, peer review component to it. So as new resources are developed, you can submit them for peer review, which can help with some of that. Uh, so great point, Dan, thanks. Kind of to that point, um, Chris, one of the things I think that's on my to-do list when I look at educational materials is to start bucketing them more thoroughly about specifically who I think they're good for, not just growers, but at what phase of implementation do I think it's good for? Um, because that's, I think, what jumped out to me at the discussion um, with the inspector panel is looking at those expectations and how those expectations change over time. And perhaps that's something we haven't done a good enough job at guiding people towards which materials are actually best for them or for where they're at in their process. That's that's a great point. I was also thinking yesterday about the individual. I mean, it seems uh, obvious at this uh, looking back, but the individual's role in the farm as well, not just what, you know, what stage the farm is at, but what role the resource is intended for or intended to help. And I will say um, maybe this isn't the time for it, but um, got a note from one of the other attendees. And I think Having the inspectors was really good, but I do think it was perceived as being perhaps one-sided so that maybe next year we can do a panel of growers instead. Mm. Oh, for the panel. And, you know what I mean? So like if we're going to, not that we're going to do training, but if we are going to do training next year, switch it up and get a different perspective. Great. Other intentions? Where are we headed? Hey, Chris. Hey, Aaron. It's Aaron from the cold, I mean, Empire State. <laughs> and I would like to echo that on the training materials and resources. We'll be, uh, as always, looking at the NECAFS Clearinghouse, um, looking for new resources from the University of Maryland and Cornell University also. Thanks, Aaron. Other next steps anybody has? I know everybody's going to complete the evaluation, right? This is Hans. Um, <clears throat> I I think with the you know the water uh, rule proposal coming out, uh, it would be a great time next year to dive into some risk assessments on um, yeah just ag water in general um and you know how to how to interpret different things for like assess comment and and whatnot testing and yep. and also to add to that mitigation steps because it's for farmers that really have water problems um not having any specific things they have to follow is going to be fun <laughs> yeah Okay, we might be winding down with reflections. Elizabeth, anything you wanted to bring up? No, just that uh, I appreciate the time, the energy, and the, the feedback. I know I come out of these feeling rejuvenated around our work, and I hope everybody else does too. And um, we do take your feedback very seriously. I think you all know that by now. Uh, so please do give us your thoughts, positive or negative. We, we love them all. So um, just help us get better. So that's it. I'll turn it back to you, Chris. Great. So the other, the other um, two groups I want to thank um, is, are the FDA and the USDA, uh, our partners in the, uh, in the federal agencies who r really do uh, make a lot of what we do possible um, through funding and awards, um, whether it's direct funding for NECAFs or um, the, the state cooperative um, agreements, making it possible for 
uh, regulatory partners to be with us as well and to, to, to do the work we do every day. So thank you to um, the folks at FDA and USDA for, you know, being supportive uh, fiscally, but also being here. Uh, it's been great to have, have you with us uh, for the past couple of days uh, and be part of the discussion. So thank you. Um, with that, I, I'm going to encourage everybody to um, take advantage of the virtual networking. Um, it did sound like this, that was one of the big things that people took away from this opportunity was being able to connect with people that we haven't seen in person for a couple of years now. That will remain open, I believe, until 3.30 or 4 o'clock today. Um, so take advantage of the virtual networking uh, through the, the, the um, annual meeting portal. Um, please do con complete the evaluation. Um, and if yeah, beyond the evaluation, if you have ideas um, that maybe you didn't feel comfortable bringing up right now that you think we should pursue as part of NECAPS, uh, reach out to Elizabeth or I, um, and we're, we're happy to hear from you any way you're willing to share your, your ideas, whether it's about the annual meeting or work group activity or something totally, totally new and um, out of the box. We'd love to hear about it. Um, okay. um, Chris, ahead, I just, I, I put in the chat box, the subpart E office hours. We had one last Friday. We have one, sorry, Hans mentioning it. I've been meaning to stick it in the chat box all day. So Hans mentioning it jogged my mind right at the very end. So I just did want to mention that to everyone. Great. Thanks, Betsy. Okay. Uh, any other final thoughts? Well, thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Elizabeth, uh, again. And um, I hope everybody has a wonderful day out in that 80 degree weather, which is everywhere, right? Or will be soon. Take care.